Yeah, when Cleveland becomes a place where you look longingly and go, man, I, I wish we could sign a, a free agent like they do, uh, you know, it's uh, it's been a rough go. Um, Willard and Dibbs, Chris Rose joins us now, one of our absolute favorites. That's, I mean, that's where a Giants fan is at right now. Chris, I, I mean, you, you've you been through this, I don't know, bajillion times as a Cleveland sports follower. Like, what do you say to a, to a Giants fan that has just spent all week now licking wounds? Yeah, we're very, very similar. I mean, all those times we chased after guys like Aaron Judge, <laughs> you know, A-Rod when he was available, Garrett Cole a couple of years ago, and just missed out at the end. Yeah, that's really tough for us. <laughs> We've been so close so many times. Okay, but what uh, what if, what if I put it this way though? I because I do think there is a feeling when you're when you're a fan of a team that's gone through this kind of experience, and the Giants, high profile, have finished in second now repeatedly. You know, Bryce Harper, Stanton. Uh, some would even say Otani. Whether that was second place, I don't know. But they missed, and now Aaron Judge. And you start to read what happened, and the story comes out that. For instance, that that hotel video at the St. Regis was staged and planned by the Judge crew. Like it feels like the Giants got taken on a ride, and and fans are are worried that they're becoming the team that always finishes second. And and no player will say yes. There's got to be some concerns there. Well, I think there's two separate things at play here. One, I absolutely don't believe that the Giants got used here. I, I mean, I think that Aaron Judge had every intention, if the finances didn't measure up from New York's standpoint, that he would have been a San Francisco Giant. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the dollar figure difference would have had to be in order for him to go to San Francisco. But if they were comparable, then he was going to go back to New York. And and by the way, I'm not going to tell Giants fans how to feel. You can be disappointed, but you can understand when a guy goes back to his baseball home. Like, I get it. He might be from less than 100 miles away from San Francisco, but New York's the only thing he's known professionally. And by the way, they're basically in the playoffs every year. And the same cannot be said for San Francisco at this point. And on top of that... um, you know, if I had been Farhan Zaidi, I, I would have made a play for some bigger names. Mitch Hanniger's a nice ball player. When he's on the field, he's a really, really solid contributor. But I would have maybe gone in, into the next shopping district to try and get somebody else and tell Aaron Judge, yes, this, we want you to be the centerpiece, but we're going to surround you with the right people, too. And I don't know if that was a mistake or not. Well, we possibly will never know. How much is that now kind of the fabric of where free agency falls? Because the Padres reportedly offered him $400 million and he took less to go to the Yankees, even though the Padres seem to have a deeper, better roster than New York does right now. Yes. Um, I mean, I think it's close. The rotation for San Diego is not great right now. It's just not. You know, they've... Um, the top three is good, and then there's some question marks after that. I, I mean, I like New York's rotation a little bit better. I like San Diego's lineup a lot better now that obviously they've added Bogarts, but it, you know he wouldn't be there if Judge had taken that. And we also don't know about that $400 million number, but we do knew, know that the Padres met. Um, but, I mean, you know, what? here's the thing. I'm not a, bit, I'm not a Yankee fan at all, but don't you feel like they're always going to be in the hunt every year? For sure. Yeah. Right. And I don't know if we can say that about some of the other teams that he has considered. It's just, I mean, those are facts to me. Um, it feels like San Diego's not going anywhere, but Machado's, you know, Machado's deal is up after, not deal, but he can opt out after this year, just like Bogarts did with Boston. Um, Josh Hader's deal is up. Juan Soto's is up in two years. So we don't know what that team is going to look like. It feels like we're going all in in 2023. And heck, they might just keep burning money left and right, which is kind of fun for their fan base. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. But back to the Giants here. You know, where do they go? Do they throw goo gobs of money at Carlos Correa and say, you're our dude? Because they, they have a lot to do other than just that. Yep. 
Yep. Yeah, and you know what's interesting about these deals, uh, especially if you are a fan of one of these teams that really tries to play the analytics game financially as well as with baseball, feels like we got two things going on at the same time that at least one side doesn't like. I'm sure owners do not like having to pay these players until they're 40 years old. Everyone's right. The back half of these deals, probably not good. But a player is going to say, then stop holding me under arbitration until I'm 30 yeah. years old and let me do something earlier. Wouldn't that be a mutual thing? And I know I'm talking about a massive change to the whole structure of the way this is done, but it just seems ridiculous, Chris, that, that nobody can get their money until they're 30 and then they're going to force teams to pay them until they're 41. Which is exactly why if you're a fan of the Atlanta Braves, you're sitting pretty. I mean, because they have, they've figured out the system. They really have, right? They've signed, uh, you know, Riley. They had to give him more than $200 million, But everybody else is very, very reasonable. I mean, Ronald Acuna, $130 million for that dude? Right. Are you kidding me? I mean, look at what everybody else is getting. And you're talking about getting not, the, not any of the worst years of his career. You're talking about getting the best years of his career for that dollar figure. He would be worth probably 3x. Right? And look at what they've done. They did it with Spencer Strider. They did it with Michael Harris Jr. They're doing it all over the place. The one, the two guys they've let go are Freddie Freeman, and we know how that worked out, and possibly Dansby Swanson. But for the most part, other than that, they have just nailed this thing. So, um, but yes, they're not going to revamp the system. You know, they had a chance last year and to try and make it so that, um, after five years, a guy could become a free agent, and the, the owners were like, ah, yeah, good try, kids. Let's get back to the negotiation table. And so in the meantime, you're going to have a few owners, and I guarantee you there are some pissed-off owners today that Xander Bogarts is going to get $280 million until he's 40. Right? What's he going to be? He's going to be a DH at that point. And people are going to be like, really? Like, didn't we see this with the pool hole stuff? Well, yeah, but that's that is the way baseball business is, is built, um, and it, it does stink. Like you're going to sit here and w- say, "Well, so what's Trey Turner going to look like at age 37?" Hmm. Instead of being excited that y'all just signed Trey Turner to a team that finished two wins shy of winning it all, that's what we should be excited about. Yeah, but you're right. The system is such, and you talk about Carlos Correa to the Giants, and wouldn't that be a similar situation here if Correa is looking for ten? or 11 years, and the Giants are in a spot now where they're kind of the desperate team. Can they? It's almost like, Chris, they can't afford not to throw 11 years knowing yeah. that the last four years of the deal might be a little wonky. Yep. There's no question. <laughs> um, they're stuck. They're stuck because they have to prove it to their fan base. Because if they don't make a big move, then it feels like they don't care. Whether it's accurate or not, that's going to be the perception. Uh, I think the Boston Red Sox are in a very similar boat, right? They made a couple of great signings yesterday, or perceived to be great signings, right? Uh, they pick up the outfielder from Japan, who's really interesting and an on-base machine, and then they pick up Kenley Jansen for a couple of years, who had a really solid year with the Braves. And all anybody in Boston wants to talk about is, what the hell's going on here? We can't keep any of our own guys. Like, we trade Mookie Betts because we didn't want to pay him, and now Xander opts out. You know, like, what's next? Raphael Devers is going to walk or he's going to get traded? So you have teams that are, have had a lot of success over the last decade or decade and a half in Boston's um, discussion that have to prove it to their fan bases right now. Um, hey, Chris, switching gears a little bit. Baker Mayfield starting on Thursday Night Football. Is this, is this what we're doing tonight? I don't know. I mean, it all depends on the health of, you know, Walford, really, I mean, if he can't go, then he might get some time. But I can't imagine. I mean, the guy hasn't even really had a practice, right? I mean, barely thrown to receivers. I don't know how that works out. But their season is so lost at this point. It might be fun for all of us to see if maybe he can uh, catch lightning in a bottle, I guess. Kind of. That's something to, to at least watch with the Rams. Meanwhile, out here... We've got Mr. Irrelevant going up against yes. the GOAT on Sunday. Could you have fathomed another Disney-esque sort of a matchup here in the NFL? I mean, I love it. 
I hate that it happened to Jimmy G. I'm a I'm a big Jimmy G supporter. Um but yeah, I mean listen, if there's if there's a guy who can coach this dude up and work a system, it's Kyle Shanahan. And and hopefully, you know, Brock Purdy plays it as well as he did last week. I thought that was impressive, you know, because it's not an easy defense to come off the bench against and face right away. So, um, you know, I'll be fascinated to see how it goes. Short week for the Bucks, long trip. Uh, I give them a good shot of, of taking down Tampa Bay and continuing this little run that they've been on. Um, hey, Chris, before you run, this is percolating right now just because he is the biggest name left to go back to baseball. What what do you – forget the team. What do you think at age 28, knowing that Judge just got 40 per year, Bogart's 11-280, what what's the number for Correa? What do, what do you think he gets? Yeah, I think it starts with a three. The only way it doesn't is if he has to, for whatever reason – take a twins type deal that he did a year ago where I believe that was three for one Oh three, but obviously the opt out after the first. And then if that happens again, then there's gotta be something going on here that we don't know. Last year, I get it right. We're coming off a work stoppage. Everybody's kind of panicking. We, they, the owners claim they hadn't recovered from the pandemic financially, all that sort of stuff. Right now, there's no excuses. We got guys getting goo gobs of money who aren't close to Carlos Correa's ill. So, uh, but I do think that there's going to be enough teams involved where there's going to be a three in front of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering if there's going to be a four. I, that, no, I honestly, I, I, I maybe no. not. But but I mean, if no. if if Judge getting forty a year, can't Correa say I should get thirty five? And if Judge is getting nine years and Correa is two years younger, can't he say I want twelve years? I, I it, it's going it's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, it could. Yeah. I, I think it could be the. I think the dollar value could be could be the same. Yeah, but you, you know, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, he could get twelve for, you know, three sixty, three sixty five, three seventy. Yeah, but to push it to four feels. Dare I say that after I'm talking about numbers three sixty, three sixty five, and three seventy, and I'm saying four feels excessive. Well, uh, <laughs> oh, right. matter with me. It's I not mean, that much of a, of a if, leap to get from three seventy five to if, four. If he gets twelve years and he gets thirty five a year, that's four twenty. Yeah, four twenty. God Almighty! Right. Well, but right. Mr. Bogarts, what did what did he get? Twenty seven a year. Right? He did, but he's two years older. And, yeah, he's two years older. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I hear you, um, Chris. Great stuff, Thanks, man. Great Chris. to have you. Appreciate it as always, guys. All right, thanks. Uh, There goes Chris Rose.